Hello, internet! So, this is a very impromptu video. I wasn't planning on filming today, which every YouTuber says, but I don't consider myself a YouTuber. I consider myself more so of someone who occasionally pops out of her hibernation to screech for a few minutes and then quietly resumes her napping. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. I don't want to get into the details of my stance on 13 Reasons Why because I feel like it's been the same debate every single time since they first released the first season. I can make a separate video on that if you guys want to hear me ramble some points that have probably already been made all condensed into one video. <laughs> also leave the link to my article that I wrote about it back when season 2 was coming out down below in the comments, so if you want to see my stance, it's there. <laughs> Anyhow, the reason why the topic of mental health is very important is because I'm someone who's directly impacted by mental illnesses. I've sought therapy since I was 15. Unfortunately, me struggling means that there are points in my life in which I thought that the world would be better without me. Although I'm not fully, I don't consider myself fully recovered in the sense that I can't really, like I'm still seeking treatment and probably will seek higher treatment, but I'm, in comparison to where I was, even last year, I'm so much better. And actually two days after my 21st birthday will be one year since I was last hospitalized for a suicide attempt. So that's really exciting. So yeah, here's my take on 13 Reasons Why Not. Again, inspired by 13 Reasons Why. And some different things that I would have missed out on if two days after my 20th birthday, I wasn't so lucky. I don't know if you can see the journal that I got after Graduating high school, I want to say, but I never really used it until now. It was the first thing that I would have missed out, and the first thing that anyone having suicide as a resolve would miss out is unlearning toxic thoughts and behaviors and being able to replace them. And that's a pretty lengthy one. Um, like the problem with mental illness is that they're not logical, and if they were. We wouldn't be spending hundreds and millions of dollars on research. We wouldn't be having this mental illness epidemic to the scale that we're seeing right now if it was as easy as just thinking logically. It's a process. You don't just wake up one day and think, I'm not going to be anxious anymore and actually do my laundry. No, that's... If it was, anxiety wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> Just being able to unlearn these processes and being able, like unlearning these thoughts and behaviors is a process and it's a lot of hard work and um, being able to replace them, the process might seem like it's not worth it. But once you get to a point where you look back and compare where you are now to where you were, it's so rewarding. Um, like I know for me, one of the things was just feeling like I would lose control if I didn't perfectly count calories. I still guesstimate calories, but it's not like I have to count every last one. And that's not exactly where I want to end up being, but it's still a step in the right direction. And I'm learning every day to better listen to my body and understand when I need to feed it. That's something that I would that I would not have ever thought I could do, but I'm slowly getting there. Whatever toxic thought or behavior that you're holding on to, or that's holding on to you, you're going to be able to let that go. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next month, maybe not even next year, but eventually. Second is getting to do the things you want to do because I know like depression kind of like saps all your energy and interests and I was really in that same boat. Sophomore year of college, um, 
that was when I was in IOP. Shortly before that, um, I remember like there were like a string of concerts I would have loved to go to. There was Hoodie Allen, there was Pierce the Veil, a handful of others I can't remember. But pretty much my anxiety and depression left me feeling like I physically couldn't go to, get out and go. Like, I honestly don't know how I made it to class. And now I'm getting to see a couple concerts on my birthday weekend. I couldn't even get myself to go really anywhere. Like I had to pretty much haul myself out of my room to do something that I absolutely had to do. But to get to a point where now I get to not only have the capability of doing those things, but to actually want to do those things, that's something else that I thought I completely lost. Things like depression and anxiety can often make people feel like they're losing a sense of them, they're losing their personality, they're losing who they are. And something that I've learned is that just because something is dormant or not in plain sight doesn't mean it's gone. And part of recovery is just learning how to find it. And if, say, like, self-appreciation was never there to begin with, learning how to make it. The thing that's really helped me kind of get through is, like, this is kind of strange, but um, just knowing how incredible humanity is in the sense that every day people are doing research, they're trying to understand the brain more, and we are, and even though psychology is still relatively early science, there's still so much being done in that field to constantly help people and to constantly study it. And the fact that we have diagnoses, money and resources going towards trying to further treatment means that every day we're getting closer to maybe not eradicating it completely, but making it more treatable, more bearable. Something that kind of gives me hope for knowing that change is possible. And that's kind of overlaps with one, not really. This one, I'm, I mean more so external factors, change is possible. Especially when your circumstances have kind of been set there for so long, it can feel like a lot of them are just there to stay. And I know for me, was especially in high school, there was really no escaping from people I didn't want to be around. And that really left me feeling like I was in a rut. And I definitely settled in relationships because I felt like I needed that sort of emotional crutch to validate my existence and to make me feel like I have a boyfriend. That means someone tolerates me. Looking back, and seeing the friendships that I made in college and the current relationship that I have just kind of leaves me thinking, why did I think that? It's been a really big rut where I thought that nobody really liked me, even though my friends in college are super sweet. I just couldn't see how anyone would want to be around me when I didn't want to be around me either. But I got more involved in the newspaper that following semester after my final, hopefully final attempt. And that was something that I was kind of afraid of doing just because I didn't want to subject my peers into my existence. But it's been an incredible opportunity for me and something that I would have missed out on. The fifth reason why not is learning your actual worth. And this kind of overlaps with what I just said. Um, a lot of times it can kind of be easy to fall in the mindset of I don't like me, therefore I'm going to project how I view myself onto others. And that's not necessarily true. Of course you should be aware of things that you should work on, but it comes to a point where you're not trying to improve yourself and you're instead just being yourself up and falling into a mindset of thinking that you're not worthy of being loved or worth living and that's completely not true and I think that's one thing that therapy really helped me with just realizing how much I projected my negative thoughts on myself and my worth or lack thereof onto other people and realizing that I'm essentially just 
a tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist. Oh, these people are too nice to tell me that I'm a worthless piece of garbage. But they secretly think so. Because one time they didn't wave at me in a crowded hall. <laughs> that obviously doesn't make sense, but because my self-worth clouded my vision, that made perfect sense. I'm still not there yet, I'm still not really confident in myself, if I'm perfectly honest, but I'm at least learning to acknowledge that my negative self-worth has <laughs> The sixth reason to stay is getting closer to friends and connecting with other people with your story. I used to feel like I was this massive burden onto my friends that they didn't want to listen to me, but I find that by being open with my friends about things I'm going through, in return, a lot of them were a lot more open with me. And beforehand, I just tried to limit how much I shared with my friends, partially because I never really had like a super long-term friendship before college. I didn't really know how to maintain one, I guess, but it was mostly because I didn't want to burden them. And I realized that a lot of my friends happened to also be pretty self-critical and were worried that because I wasn't really sharing anything with them, that I wasn't really that interested in being their friend, or I was just the kind of person who they might say hi to or partner up in a project or something like that. And I saw that when I started being a little more open with my friends, that they didn't take that as me being a burden, but rather a sign that I trusted them, a sign that I want to be their friend, and that if they want to ramble, that I'm here to listen. The seventh reason why not is things to come. Like, I know that there are several people who say, like, they would end it all, but they want to know how their favorite show ends, and they think that that's a stupid reason, but I think it's very important to make it clear that there's no such thing as a stupid reason to keep going. Like, if that's a reason for you to make it, then go ahead and do it. I don't know, like, a lot of times it can kind of feel hopeless and thinking like, that's not enough of a reason, but I don't know. <laughs> that's something that's definitely helped me, like, knowing that my favorite bands are going to be on tour at some point, or my favorite author might publish a new book, whatnot. And something that I would have never been able to imagine at the point of my last attempt. Um, back in middle school, slash, I think it was more so junior high, but I was obsessed with Ned Bazzini's books. And it's kind of a funny story, so one of my favorite books. Um, I wouldn't have ever anticipated that Be More Chill would be such a successful Broadway musical. And here we are today, and it would be a dream come true to see the musical. It still makes me really sad that I won't ever be able to thank the author of the books for writing books that I really connected with. But the fact that he at least created something that was so meaningful to me at such a vulnerable point in my life really inspires me. And that's another point I'm gonna be making in a bit. Eighth reason why not. So there can be unexpected endings, possibilities, and you just never know. Sometimes the ending might be even better than what's planned. In my personal life, at least thus far, is I started off college thinking that I would want to get my PhD and be a professor in business of some sort. And then that slightly changed, thought I might, I don't know, want to, want, want to get my MBA. And then all of a sudden I found myself at what felt like a dead end, where I didn't want anything to do with business whatsoever. And I felt like I just kind of blew three years of my life on a degree meaningless to me. I can't go back in time and change my major, at least not if I want to graduate on time, which I do. And I got a minor in something that I absolutely love, which is writing. So I didn't necessarily 
shift the tides, but I learned how to change my sails, for lack of a better metaphor, and now I realize that by having that extra breadth of knowledge and business that I probably wouldn't have had if I just jumped straight into writing, that by itself opens more doors. And I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing after college. I still have one more year to think about that. But just knowing that it's not the end to change my mind has been one of the most liberating things. Number nine, so meeting new people. There's so many people that I was too shy to talk to, too anxious to talk to, thinking, what if they don't like me? What if I annoy them? But I kind of learned to, I guess, I guess the problem before was just thinking that in order for me to be a confident person who can talk to people, I needed to get rid of all those thoughts of self-doubt. But rather, that's not a very realistic or good first step in my opinion. I think a better thing is to acknowledge that sure you might be nervous, like just talking to people gives most people anxiety to some degree. Like there's a reason why most people don't like doing phone calls and instead prefer text or email. But just knowing that other people face at least some level of nervousness and it's not like you're the only one who's messed up is also pretty liberating and just knowing that your best friend, your, be your future partner, your future, I don't even know, like might be out there waiting for you. It's definitely something to live for and just knowing that you can be that person for someone else. The tenth reason is, even though life can be pretty rough sometimes, there are still glimpses of joy and you just have to reach out for them. Some glimpses might be more so like picosecond peaks, others might be much longer, but you never know and you just gotta keep out and look for them. I think one of the most inspiring glimpse of joy for me. This isn't the most recent, but this was the most vivid and intense. It was back in my spring break. I went to visit my boyfriend and we both went to a concert. It was Queen 92, who was still one of my favorites. Just the fact that I was at a show where the artist was so passionate about sharing his journey with anxiety, being so open and just feeling that energy of him using his story to connect with others and just feeling that sense of support and understanding in that same arena was just incredible. And I know that it's not like I suddenly became best friends with everyone in that area or anything like that, but just knowing that in that room, a lot of us bought tickets and were in that room because we all connected in some way. We all have that shared experience of living with anxiety, living with depression, living with self-doubt, and deciding to stay strong and be there. That was one of the most incredible moments for me. And if I had to pinpoint one specific point in the concert, it was his song Life Must Go On where he says, and right before it he said that it was pretty much his encouragement to kind of keep going in life whether you're high whether you're low gotta keep on be a part of the show which is a line from a song and just hearing everyone singing life must go on over and over it i started crying at that concert i'm surprised i'm not crying right now but yeah like that was something that i would have missed out on and at that point where I was in the hospital for an attempt. I, back then I was still a huge Quinn fan, but I would have never imagined that I would be able to see him live. And at that moment, it just became clear, like as stupid as it might sound to someone else, 
that moment, that brief moment, self made it, made all the struggles in between worth it, or at least made it feel more than worth it. Eleventh reason why not is love. I just mean this generally, not only loving someone else in an intimate way, but also loving your friends, loving your family, loving yourself, and the feeling of just suddenly realizing that one day you don't absolutely hate yourself. Like that sounds, that might sound like a low bar. I know for those who know how it feels to wake up every day with a feeling of dread. It's just so gradual, you don't even realize that, and you might not even realize that you're getting better. But it's just that moment of self-awareness where you realize that that weight, maybe it's not completely gone yet, but it's so much lighter than it used to be. It's definitely something worth fighting for. The twelfth reason why not is accepting that you can't change the past, and sure, it might not have been the best, but what can you make out of it? And and right now I currently have a good number of friends who also struggled with mental illnesses, but they use their story and their passions to find another outlet to express themselves, whether it be art, writing, music, whatever it is. Just knowing that this weight that you carry doesn't have to be a weight. And sure, like, you might not be able to get rid of it completely. Like, it's not realistic for someone not carry any burdens or troubles. Like, that's not realistic, but knowing that that weight that you carry alone can be made so much better, so much lighter, and can be even turned into something that might even help someone else is something else to look forward to. For me, I'm trying to turn my experiences into encouragement for other people going through similar things. I remember interviewing a student. They told me that they didn't know anyone who sought intensive outpatient or IOP while managing school full time. And that hit me because I was someone who was an IOP and doing school full time. And I asked them, if they had known that I was doing that, would they have changed their mind about going to IOP or not? And they said that that might have helped play a factor. Just knowing that that path has already been somewhat walked upon, that there are students who do choose that path and will choose our path, and that path even after they graduate, knowing that it's possible and it's there. And just in general, just showing that sure mental illnesses can be chronic and they can last for years, but they can become so much more manageable. Last but not least, you're valuable and you'd be missed. And I know it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that you're not anyone special or you're not quote unquote worth it, but that is so not true. There would be people who miss you and people who'd be genuinely sad that you're not here. Like, obviously I don't know every single person who has died by suicide, but I still feel a hole in my heart just knowing that there are people who never got to see any of these things. Um, that I just mentioned on this list and realizing that I happen to be one of the very fortunate people to have been given multiple second chances but I'm in the process of turning my life into something that I couldn't have even imagined just knowing that I was given that opportunity to turn things around anyhow this was a pretty lengthy video Thanks so much for sticking around. I don't know how much this will help anyone else, but I hope it's helped at least one person. I'll leave some resources down below in the comments if you're struggling with mental health and don't know where to begin. And thanks so much for watching.
See you next time. Bye.